Now we're ready for the second phase, which is focusing exclusively on the toss. The toss is the single most important aspect of any serve because it will determine the trajectory, power, and consistency of your serve. Present the ball in the same way as you did without the ball. Toss the ball slightly higher than the height of your head. Step forward with your lead foot in an open position, which means your hips are not rotated yet. If you do this correctly, the ball should land slightly to the right and in front of your lead foot, which is the ideal contact point distance to maximize a flat and fast trajectory. Once you can toss at the same height and location five times in a row, then you're ready to perform the full serve. Make sure you start each serve by going through your mental checklist, which is presenting the ball by forming a V with your feet open to your hitting shoulder, weight shifted to your back leg, serving elbow back, hand firm, and hold the ball with a straight arm in front of your hitting shoulder. Then perform the following sequence, toss, step, rotate, swing, freeze. Contact the ball with a firm hand in the center of the ball, just above the center of your palm. The goal is to have minimal contact with the ball and drive through the center of the ball to maximize the float effect. If your hand is too relaxed, it will take the shape of the ball, which will create topspin in a consistent trajectory. Then freeze to your target for accuracy and consistency. Two simple drills that you can practice on your own to work on your float serve technique. The first drill is called the wall serving feedback drill because how the ball bounces back will tell you a lot about what you need to improve about your technique. Stand about 15 feet away and visualize the height of the net on the wall. The goal is to serve the ball so that it has no spin and bounces directly back to you, which means you toss the ball correctly in front of your hitting shoulder had flat contact, and drove straight through the center of the ball. If the ball returns left or right, you didn't toss in front of your hitting shoulder. If the ball bounces back high, you contacted the ball below the center or too high above eye level. If the ball bounces back too low and in front, then you contacted above the center of the ball. If the ball spins, then your hand was too relaxed or you didn't contact it above the center of your palm. The second drill is called serving progressions. Start behind the 10 foot or 3 meter line and perform a float serve. Once you can serve straight and flat with no spin, then you've earned the right to take one step back and see if you can serve straight and flat again with no spin. Once you've done that, then take another step back. The goal is to gradually work your way back to the baseline. The purpose of this drill is not to simply serve from different locations on the court. The focus should be the quality of the serve. So that is why you cannot take a step back until your float serve is straight, flat, and has no spin. I hope you found this tutorial video helpful. Let me know in the comments below which detail helped you the most and what challenges you're currently experiencing with your float serve.